Welcome to Friday, a rather damp start to the final program of the week here on TNT. Is there currently political instability in Thailand? That's something we address seriously in an editorial a bit later on in the program. We've also got the very serious issue of gummy bears to discuss, all coming up on TNT. Talk of coups, what you might find in a gummy bear bag in Thailand and shortage of liquid petroleum gas around the region. Well, coming up later in the program, but first we'll just update you on the shenanigans or the latest shenanigans in Thai politics. Understand a lot of you may not be interested, but it is the leading story in Thailand at the moment. So let's just check. But first, the Bangkok Post and the Deputy Prime Minister Prowit Wongsawan, also the caretaker Prime Minister now, expected to seize the opportunity while serving as Acting Prime Minister to consolidate the ruling Palang Pracharat Party ahead of the next general election. And uh, a political science lecturer at the Burapa University said General Prayut assuming the role of Acting Premier, even temporarily, could be a boon to the party. Uh, He's quoted as saying, the Palang Pracharat members find General Prayut more accessible and approachable. Diehard supporters of General Prayut have recently begun distancing themselves from the Palang Pracharat party, according to that political academic. So uh, another look at that particular story and also the Bangkok leads... The PM pressured over the defence role. General Prayut Chanucha has insisted he will continue working as defence minister despite growing calls for him to step down from the role. Further on in that story, it says he's insisted he will continue working as the defence minister and that uh, he did not turn up for work at the ministry yesterday. And a government source said he remotely chaired a meeting of the Defence Council in what is seen as a bid to ease the growing pressure on him to also step down as Defence Minister. Also, just notice in that story, the last paragraph, the court has given General Prayut 15 days to respond to his suspension. His suspension is expected to last around a month while the court considers its final verdict. And before we move on to a story about BitCub and the SCB Bank in Thailand, just a quick reminder that tomorrow morning at 9am Thai time, I'll be doing a, another one of our live broadcasts. Do you call them broadcasts? Vlog casts on YouTube. Just me and you and a cuppa and a chat. So that'll be at 9am tomorrow. I think we had around about 301 people online. Uh, yeah, last Saturday morning, and it was quite a lot of fun. So you might have some questions, you might have some points of view, and we look forward to bringing those uh, to you 9 a.m. tomorrow Thai time. Let's go to our next story, and this one about the relationship between SCB, the Siam Commercial Bank, terminating their deal, a 17.8 billion baht deal, to acquire shares in BitCub Online. Now, BitCub is Thailand's biggest cryptocurrency exchange. You can put your cash into BitCub. Uh, It can then be traded as a cryptocurrency. It could be exchanged with other currencies, and then you can withdraw your money in cash. Well, that's the idea. They ran into a few problems about a month ago when they ceased trading. And, uh, well, not quite, but it meant that you weren't able to withdraw any money from BitCub for a time. And also, you weren't allowed to move your money from one cryptocurrency wallet into another. Now, they're still resolving all that. But in the meantime, looks like SCB's had enough and they've uh, withdrawn their uh, plans to acquire 17.8 billion baht in that particular company. The headline, the SCB Securities passed a resolution today, that's yesterday, to terminate the purchase of a 51% stake in BitCub. And uh, they cited various unresolved issues. Just a bit further down in that article, it says due diligence has been conducted over the past several months. And although the results revealed no major issues, BitCub is still in the process of resolving various issues, which we just addressed in response to multiple recommendations and orders from the SEC. So it looks like SCB, quite a conservative bank here in Thailand, 
I'm not going to take the plunge just yet into the world of cryptocurrency. To our next story, and this is from Thai PBS World. They asked the question, what power does Prawit have as the acting Prime Minister of Thailand? That's a pretty good question. Uh, the Deputy Prime Minister Prawit Wongswan is now assuming the role of acting Prime Minister amid questions as to what power he really has in his caretaker capacity. And the State Administration Acts makes it clear an acting Prime Minister has the same authority bestowed to the person he replaces. The Deputy Prime Minister Wisano Kriyanam on Wednesday stressed that Prawit will be running the country with the full authority of a Prime Minister. Wisanu Kriyanam, who has been around... Uh, the, the back halls of parliament for some 20 years in Thailand, also serving as a finance uh, minister in several cabinets, uh, sort of known as a bit of a power broker. And he also says that uh, he'll be administrating with the power of the prime minister. He can even reshuffle the cabinet or dissolve the parliament. Uh, but <laughs> then he asked the question, but why would he want to do that? And with that question, a good question indeed, let's go to today's editorial. So I'm here at Suwannapum Airport and I'm talking about army coups here in Thailand. Now the reason for this is that I asked a simple question on our community section of the YouTube channel on TNT. And the question was, with Prawit Wongsuan now as the acting Prime Minister, the caretaker Prime Minister, do you think there will be any difference? And out of the five different answers, some of them saying things like, oh, it'll be much the same, 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 but different. Uh, Prawit will come back in a few months. One of the options I put was, no problems, the army will probably have another coup. Well, <clears throat> a lot of people, in fact, there was some 17%, I think it was even up to 19% at some stage, ticked that particular uh, part of the question, thinking that there will be another coup here in Thailand. There are three reasons why there won't be another coup. The first one is because the current commander-in-chief of the Thai army has come out publicly and said on the record that as far as he's concerned, during his term as the chief of the Thai army, there won't be another coup in Thailand. The second reason is whichever way you want to paint it, whichever way you want to look at the current government, it is a remnant of the 2014 army coup. I mean, the upper house, there are some 250 senators, were all hand-picked by the NCPO. That certainly weighs the parliament in their favour. Now, beyond that, you would have to say that the conservative forces, the military-leaning forces, the elite of Thailand, are still well in control of what's happening here. And so if you want to say it's all about control and the army wants to take control, well, they really do, in many ways, already have control given that both Prawit Wongsawan, who was the chief commander of the army from 2004 to 2005, and Prayut Chanuchar, himself an ex-commander-in-chief of the Thai army, are still really pulling the levers of power here in Thailand. The third reason is probably a little bit more abstract. And I would say that there is now little appetite for a coup in Thailand, certainly a lot less than there was in the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and even 2014. I think when Thais maybe used to just accept that army coups were part of the political cycle here in Thailand, there is a lot less appetite for that now. I mean, Thais are becoming more educated. The young are growing up believing that they deserve a chance at democracy. So I think another army coup would be a very big step for Thailand. And in my opinion, extremely unlikely, certainly between now and the next election. What happens after the next election is, well, anybody's uh, pick at the moment. That's my feelings on the army coup and what's happening in Thailand at the moment. Thanks for joining us on TNT. Certainly a bit of a moist day as I look out the windows here in Phuket. 
a lot of rain around this morning, but it looks like it might clear up during the day. And uh, just wanted to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you get the opportunity. That certainly helps me. It also gives you the opportunity to get alerts when there's a new program. Usually, at the moment, we're going to try and get the program out just around about 9 a.m. Thai time each morning. Then on Saturdays, do our live program where we spend an hour together. All right, uh, checking some of the main news stories around the region. And the Straits Times has uh, a bit of a roundup, uh, forgetting their main story at the top, which you can check out at thestraitstimes.com. And uh, that story, the world narrowly avoided radiation disaster after a power cut at a nuclear plant. You can read that one. Let's check the regional stories underneath. Uh, the first one, Singapore Brunei reaffirm long-standing ties as the Sultan of Brunei concludes a state visit to Singapore. Just uh, noting that he's quite a short gentleman. Now, I know Prime Minister Lee of Singapore, he's just about six foot, so that would make the Sultan, I don't know, around about five foot four or something. Quite a short gentleman. Uh, the court ruling on Thai PM's tenure limit will be an opposition win, no matter the verdict. Looks like the Straits Times are waxing lyrical about the situation in Thailand. Another story, more than 41,000 cases of monkeypox globally, the majority of cases from the US. And another story uh, from the region, liquefied petroleum gas uh, prices in Asia at record high as Japan, South Korea starts stocking for winter and saying that liquefied natural gas prices in Asia have hit fresh records as those two countries start to get ready for their looming winter periods. And I think that's when a lot of the world is going to sort of hit the brick wall in regards to a lot of things that have been building up over the last three months, certainly in relation to the prices of the energy prices and fuel prices around the world. To uh, some more regional stories, this time to the Korean Herald, Noting two stories here. Firstly, Korea to maintain negative COVID test rules for arrivals. So for people going to South Korea at the moment, looks like you're going to have to present uh, a negative test or you're going to have to have a swab stuck up your nose, something that I have never had and uh, wouldn't look forward to. And the other big story there, Hyundai Motors invest in an automotive semiconductor startup. Noting that around the world, semiconductors are in shortage, critical shortage in some stage where a lot of car manufacturers are not able to produce their usual number of cars despite increasing demand because of the shortage of these semiconductors. So Hyundai, the, the South Korean company, looking like they're going to invest on an automotive semiconductor startup. And to our final story today, and this one, the headline from ThaiResidence.com, girl finds house key in a pack of gummy bears. Wow, how could you lose that or hide that in a packet of gummy bears? And you can see how prominent it was, certainly as the piece of string in those gummy bears. Uh, the story says... Uh, the consumer posted, I purchased the snack from a gas station convenience store in Chachongsao province. Apologies for the pronunciation. It came with a free gift that is creepy. If this key belongs to you, please contact me. And uh, just noting, the, uh, the company representative states that they have a strict quality control measure and believe this was done intentionally by an employee blaming somebody else once again. And I like this next line where this is the offer they've made to the consumer. The company is willing to pick up the customer for a tour of the factory. Fantastic. Would you take advantage of that? I think I might be asking for my money back on the gummy bears and maybe a formal apology. That story from ThaiResidence.com, which has always got the odd story in it about things happening around Thailand. And with that, I thank you very much for joining us on the final day of this week. It's been my pleasure to have you here in my home over the past 20 minutes or so. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. For those people who are around at 9am tomorrow, I look forward to seeing you online. I don't know where I'll be or who I'll be with, but it'd be great if you come along and join the party and uh, we can have a chat together. But from me, have a fantastic weekend and we look forward to seeing you with another TNT on Monday.